How many of you aspire to run your very own catering business? Well, you're in luck because today we're speaking to John William Xavier, CEO of The Big Raja. I'm Ben Ibrahim and let's go learn what it's like to be your very own boss as this is Entrepreneur. Is the proof in the pudding or is the proof in the balance sheet? Today, we speak to John William Xavier, CEO of the Big Raja Sinirin Brahad. John, thank you very much for being with us and welcome to Entrepreneur. Oh, thank you for having me. Now, John, before we answer that question for our viewers, tell us about the Big Raja. Well, the Big Raja is a uh, full services, uh, food catering and uh, event management company. We basically plan the A to Z in a function. So if you're having a function, uh, you'd come to me and then I would be able to like pick a venue for you, uh, plan out a food menu for you, uh, probably go with the decor, the tents that you require, uh, the personnel you need to run a function, and everything that encompasses in operating a function. Okay, so Pretty you go so, with yeah. a full spectrum, not just the food? Not just the food, the whole okay. event. So the A to Z in event planning. John, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. why did you select the catering industry? Well, actually, I've known this all my life, you know. I, I love food, I love people. I've been surrounded by good food all my life. My dad's a caterer, and I think that would be the obvious choice. Jordan, 15 years, I think, Appa business, catering business started. At the same time, Jord helped, or Appa helped us to catering. வந்துருக்குள்ள <laughs> அந்த மாதிரி வந்து வந்து அதுக்கு பிற்பாடு அவங்க அப்பா கூடவே வந்து கேட்ரிங் பிஸ்னஸ்ல சேர்ந்துருச்சு அதோட அதுவும் தனியா ஃபோர்டீன் இயர்ஸ்க்கு முந்தி ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணி பிக் ராஜா இப்போ நல்ல சக்சஸ்ஃபுல்லா போட்டி இந்த ப்ரூஃப் இந்த போடிங் ஓ இஸ் த ப்ரூஃப் இந்த பேலன்ஸ் ஷீட் இன் டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் மெஷர்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் சக்சஸ் measurement of success for me personally now it's got to be in the pudding you know it's, it's got to be it's got to be good it's got to be people satisfaction right. if it's in the balance sheet and you know you meet the guy down the road and he's not too happy with what you've dished out to him that's not satisfaction mm -hmm. so it, it, you got to be serving good stuff you so you got to give people quality right. all the time looking after your customer for those of you who are wondering why john is dressed up in a full diwali outfit well let's not forget It's Diwali week. So to all our Astra Awani viewers who are celebrating Diwali and to John and your staff, happy Diwali, my friend. Happy Diwali to you, Ben. Okay. Yeah. Now let's go back to the topic. Many people look at the catering business and the restaurant business as the same thing, but it's different, isn't it? Very much so. What's the differences? I think the only similarity basically is that we cook the food. There besides that there are so many differences in so many aspects but the single most important factor i would think that you know a restaurant is basically boxed in by four walls you can't actually go out of those four walls whereas a catering business can expand to so many outer areas and within the four walls you can only like maybe do 150 covers a day and that's your market so in terms of uh, remuneration labor force costing everything has got to revolve around those four walls Of course if the guy opens up a branch I mean that's great for him but that's a different ball game altogether. So significant uh, difference yeah the size and everything else that goes. With. Now let's talk about making money because mm -hmm. at the end of the day entrepreneurship yes it's about making money but you said 
Well, food has to be right. First. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about money making. Okay. Is there an approach or model that you use to get profit or to gain profit? You see, getting profit, uh, basically coming back to the basics, you know, we want to uh, increase profitability, decrease your expenditure. But to do this, you need to put right infrastructure into place. Okay. Modernization is very important. Uh, going with the industry. Catering itself in Malaysia has always been a cottage industry kind of a thing. So what we have done here at the Big Raja is we have basically invested a lot in automation in terms of missionary. Uh, we have put uh, trucks in place, more trucks than any other normal person would have. We have taken a much bigger premises also so that we'd be able to facilitate uh, more customers and give them better service. So all this will ensure more profitability because it's a wider market and also a lot of wastage is curbed because of the innovations of spending more money into it. Is there a formula that you use in terms of money making and wastage? Because in this business, mm -hmm. hospitality and catering, wastage is such a high factor, isn't it? So is there a mathematical or systemic way to approach it? Wastage, uh, in our place, not really so much, simply because my chefs have been with me for 13 to 20 years mm -hmm. uh, through the earlier companies and stuff like that. And they have honed the science of uh, making sure that things are not wasted, things are ordered according to what we need. So uh, everything is quite precise. We have also instilled new freezers, new chillers, just in the event that, you know, something is uh, overbought or stuff like that, and then we keep it. Putting up a free system can to put you back about a hundred thousand dollars and so that's quite a lot of money when you implement an investment how do you look at it in terms of returns how do you mm -hmm. measure return on investment well you just need to look at it that if you put in the infrastructure then the buses and the trains and everything are going to ride on those good roads mm -hmm. and they're going to bring in the profits back into you again right. so when you lay it out mm -hmm. out there with freezes with trucks with the workers with specialists working for you then automatically the market will respond to you and they will come back and say, these guys have got exacting standards. These guys are people that we want to do our functions with. Hygiene levels, protection levels, these are all very important because Klang Valley crowd has become very sophisticated very. in their wants. Okay. And so, you know, there's no fooling them anymore. You're not giving them good stuff, they know about it. John, tell us about your revenue generation model. How do you make money? What do you preach to your staff in terms of getting new customers and making more profits for the company? Our philosophy basically is customer is king. What we do is we have, uh, uh, the percentages are basically like this. 70% of our clientele is uh, repeat clients and 30% are newbies. So now the looking after the 70% is very important because this generates revenue for us constantly throughout the calendar year. And we keep in touch with these people. We do emails with them. We do interviews with them. We call them up. We talk to them, seasonal greetings with them. And this in turn basically generates customer base. And so we have a, also a great knowledge of our client base. And this in turn uh, translates to dollars. And last question before we go for a short commercial okay. break. Let's talk about leadership training. Were you given any training when you took over the business? Did your father groom you or mold you in a certain way? Right. My father was actually quite a tough taskmaster. You know, he put me through the school of hard knocks. He started yeah. me right at the bottom. No privileges whatsoever. You know, it was tough. a good approach. Yeah, a good approach, but you know, didn't like it at that point of time. But I suppose I learned a lot. And you know, right from the bottom, I was a driver. And I learned how to go out there and buy stuff. And then I was a waiter. And then I was, uh, sometimes I did a little bit of cooking when it was necessary. And uh, literally did almost everything. So my dad cut me no slack. And uh, he always tell me, if you can't uh, cut it, then you just leave. And that would inspire me, not in a nice way, but you know, it inspired me on anyway. Well, John says it's all in the details. Where does that experience of details come from? Well, it's from being a waiter, being a driver, being on the operational front level. We're just going to take a very short commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to learn more about the catering business. In this case, this business is called The Big Raja. Stick with us right here on Entrepreneur. Don't go away. Setiap Rabu, alamu kehidupan penuh ekstrim. Atlet dan penggiat sukan lasak di gelanggang mereka. Cara mereka melihat dunia dan kehidupan amat berbeza. Di mana bandar dan persekitaran kita adalah taman permainan mereka. Bersama Ian Johan Arif dan Dahlia Shazwan. I'm Jeremiah Smith. I'm a pro BMXer. Check out Adrenaline on Astro Awami. Ni 
Amazon Plus. What does that mean? Well, in the catering and hospitality industry, it means everything in preparation. And right now, in this interview with Mr. John William Xavier, who is the CEO of the Big Rajas in Nirmbar we're going to learn how to set up our own or your own catering business. So, John, before you set up your own catering company, you have to learn how to position yourself. Where do you want to be versus your competitors? So how does the Big Raja do it? I personally personalize my events. Every time a customer comes to me, I would give him that service that he wouldn't get from somewhere else. I would actually go into a partnership with him. And I would say, hey, you're getting married? Okay, fine. You get married, I will look after the rest for you. you know? So you don't have worries on that day. So then we form a relationship. Uh, we not pander to your needs, but we come alongside you. What are your little details? Uh, the thing with Big Raja is they are different in the sense of uh, their quality and their approach to customers. They go all the way until the minor details and uh, they are willing to help the clients to make sure that every event is successful. Now let's talk about planning. Now you've learned how to mm -hmm. position yourself. After you position yourself, you've got to go out there and get the customers, which you have alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. but let's talk about the business planning side of things. Do you use one in this business? We work back on our client base. Knowing our client base is so important. And that's where we really are at. We don't advertise much. We, we depend a lot on referrals and we you know, go back to the, the fact that you know, being master caterers, people will come back to us to finish up these functions, do their functions. And that's how we position ourselves. And we go out there and tell people, hey, we are a master caterer. So come to us and we'll be able to sort you out. In your opinion, should a catering company advertise their services? Like you said, you don't really do it that much. No, I don't do it that much. So, but what's your view on the flip side? Should a catering company advertise their services? Well, people do, you know, because there's a whole mess of catering companies out there. You know, every day one new one comes up. My father used to say, if you've got two pots and pans, you think you become a caterer. But, you know, that's what a lot of people do. So they, they do have money to advertise. They do have business to maybe last them six months to a year. Then again, proof in the pudding. You know, Malaysian public, you can't fool them. After a while, you know, they either are going with you or they are not. If your food doesn't meet up to the standards, they're going to just diss you anyway. Let's talk about pricing. Okay. Now, that's one area that many entrepreneurs or first-time entrepreneurs mm -hmm. struggle. Mm -hmm. How do you structure your pricing? We, we work on a, a slightly different market. I won't call it a niche market. That will ostracize myself. Come to the Big Raja and basically our market is middle-upper. So the way we charge is slightly more, simply because we do not compromise on the quality. People are not often amazed why uh, caterer X can give it to you at this price and why caterer B can give it to you at this price. But this is uh, our standard. Basically, people who come to Big Raja know that we have that reputation. So our pricing is slightly more and we always maintain that. Would you call yourself a premium service? I would rather you call me a premium service. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, I mean, that's what people say, you know. Uh, I'm trying to sound humble here, Ben, yeah. but you know, some people say when they go to a well, house... It is what it is. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. And yeah. some people say when you go to a house function and you see the big Raja truck outside, right. they say, okay, today we're going to have a quality meal. We know that the food's going to be good, standards are going to be good, the deco is going to be great. And so it was coming to a place where we had to be seen houses so that people would say, yeah, this is like, you know, a premium caterer that's coming to do your function. Yeah. Now let's talk about people management. There's a lot of people under you, not mm -hmm. just the waiters, right. the cooks, the chefs. What's your people management style? How do you drive your team, whether they're a waiter or a finance or a marketing person, to gain more profit, to think like a business person? I sort of like right from the waiter right up to my management staff. I actually instill ownership into them. I say that they've got to own the company. And of course, it's just not a one-sided affair. You know, it's got to be two-sided in the sense that when they take ownership of the company, they work for the company. And uh, I make terrible demands on my staff. We are on call, you know, sometimes 24 hours a day. And let it be a waiter or a management staff. Sometimes we come back here at three, four o'clock in the morning when somebody wants to have a function bright and early in the morning. But we also give you back in terms of remuneration. I instill a value of ownership. The main thing I also uh, emphasize with the staff is the attention to detail. Now, in the hospitality and catering business, mm -hmm. you have to be very careful or detailed to total quality management, not just in terms of food, but in terms of storage, stock control, mm -hmm. inventory management. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your practices, the Big Rajas practices in total quality management. 
what we do to ensure uh, quality, you know, basically three principles that we have is we have a 24 hour kitchen. Mm -hmm. Our food is never stored in, in freeze and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's fresh. And once it lands, it, it gets cooked. So ensures quality. We have a good relationship with our suppliers and they're very often we have rejected supply in case the supply that has been given has not been up to our standards or the chef says no we're rejecting this whole consignment so that's one of the ways that we keep our quality number two is we do regular food tasting not testing but you know i personally taste the food my mom who is the head chef tastes the food i was just about to ask that right yeah. right and she tastes the food and you know if they if, if there's something wrong with the spices somewhere along the way the chefs will hear about it these are important things that we do mm -hmm. kitchens are turned down immediately after cooking so that you know it's washed and you know all the regular things to make it clean back again and all the chemicals are used to clean up the kitchen so in this aspect of it it will always stay fresh let's talk about replenishment of equipment because mm -hmm. pots and pans that were used five years ago right. you can't necessarily use it in today's business that's right in terms of replenishment of stocks how do you do it there's a heavy wear and tear in this business yeah, very that? yeah very. because yeah. a lot of our staff are part-timers we have about 250 part-timers working for us. 250, wow. Yeah, because you know when we do a dinner show, well, a lot of people come out there and then they do the waiting services mm -hmm. and things like that. And so what happens is along the way that uh, a lot of pots and pans get bashed up, glasses get broken, plates get chipped, you name it. So we have a 20% cost factor from our full budget annually. And then we use this basically to buy back stock. You know? And so we've kept it aside because it is granted that, you know, 20% will go to buying new things and then we'll have to do inventory and then get rid of it every quarterly we would get rid of all the chip plates glasses and everything else that is basically broken and final question before we go for a short or commercial break or food okay. break or however way you look at it can you tell us about any maverick techniques which you've used in the past or today even because you seem like a creative guy that has brought you a lot of financial success and also catering success when I, when we were first starting the company uh, we only had one truck with us okay and i needed to you know build the brand and show people that you know big raja existed so what i would do is because business was slow also so i would tell my driver in the morning and you know i would call him and i'd say hey you take the truck and now you drive down the federal highway and you just go up one stretch right down to kl you know and then you from kl you drive back to pj again and then you just repeat this maybe about four to five times and uh, he often wondered why but basically what I was doing was, was I was showing my trucks on the highway and people would <laughs> call me, call me and say, hey, John, you know, we saw your truck today. And then they would say, we saw it again in the afternoon. How many trucks do you have? And then it's like, you know, other people would say, you must be really busy because your trucks are all over the highway. And, you know, this in turn led to a lot of uh, branding exercises and people said, yeah, we recognize the guy with the green elephant. He's the new caterer in town. So it's as maverick as it got. As uh, maverick yeah. as it got. And it worked. Yeah. It worked. It worked. Yeah. Okay. Today I've got about eight trucks. So I don't need to do the same thing anymore. Mm. My trucks are on the highway. So you can see them. Yeah. New ideas, your own ideas, your own trucks, and definitely your own costs. Mm -hmm. We're just going to take a very short commercial break right here on Entrepreneur. But when we come back, we're going to talk about my favorite topic. It's called CI, which stands for Continuous Improvement. Stick with us right here on Entrepreneur. Okay. Minyak Primax 95 Extra ni memang banyak bagi perbezaan dari segi penyimatan, dari segi kelancaran dan juga daripada segi pecutan. Bila kita naik bukit lah, sampai tak ada power lah, dia kan ada itu bunyi. Keng, 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 keng. Lepas di sini minyak, bunyi ah, sudah kurang. Kereta saya selalu susah nak hidup, sekarang tak lagi. Ia dapat memberi penjimatan dalam jangka masa yang panjang. Awak patut cuba sendirilah kot. Untuk ekstra prestasi dan penjimatan, switch for extra. Setiap hari, Gala TV membawakan kepada anda secara langsung. Gala TV, buletin hiburan tempatan dan antarabangsa memaparkan perkembangan muzik, filem, teater, fashion dan membuat eksklusif. Gala TV secara langsung setiap hari di Astro Awani. Berita segenap dimensi. See, I wasn't lying when my guest said there is food coming. And lo and behold, there's food. But we're still conducting our interview, so I'm going right. to start small and go for your traditional 
murku. So while I'm eating my murku, yes, John. Mm -hmm. Now earlier, before we call for the commercial break, I spoke about continuous improvement, and in this okay. segment, we're going to talk about continuous improvement. So how do you drive your staff for constant improvement all the time? Because in this business, you can't rest on your laurels. Basically, I have a philosophy here. We do not compromise on the quality. Everything that we do here has to be of quality, especially with the suppliers, because they are the backbone of all the supplies that come in and what we cook finally and give it to the clients. So we always check and have a good relationship with suppliers. Now, in terms of uh, in serving the stuff, you know, we have a process, a modular sort of process, right from cooking to dispensing to transportation is in a modular form. So that keeps the quality always going. We follow the same method. We also do a lot of post-mortems on our functions you know when functions go out we call back the customer we ask them you know what do you think about this you know and how did you find our services our decorations every monday morning almost we have a post-mortem list on my table and then i call in the managers and then we go through each event one by one ensuring that quality is always continued what about the improvement side of things because Sometimes in mm -hmm. this industry, you deal with big egos. Just say hypothetically, the chef is very complacent because he's a very good chef. Everybody, right. majority of people like his food. But you're trying mm -hmm. to instill continuous improvement into him. How do you do that? Well, he hasn't got a choice. <laughs> he's got to conform. <laughs> got to listen to the yeah, boss. He's got to yeah. listen to the boss. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it's not so much so hard as my way or, no, or the highway, but you know, I will sit him down and I will talk to him. You know, I, I believe uh, people have said my leadership style, you know, my mentoring style is slightly nice. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, I respect people. I believe that all men are created equal. And so I would sit the guy down and speak to him and make him see the light of day and, you know, bring him onto my side and say, this is the way we're going. And we all need to be going in one direction, not in opposite flow. The way Don works is uh, very um, subtle and he's very professional and he knows how to uh, handle things in a very everyone can accept. He's an inspiring leader who radiates a lot of positive energy. True visionary uh, with a mission to perpetuate the legacy that his late dad left for him and for his family. Over and above that, he shares his organizational goals. He inspires us to excel in our work. And uh, he is truly an ethical person. Integrity is a very key component uh, that he pushes to all of us. And last but not least, you know, he's got a good sense of humor and he's a very witty person, so it's easy to work with him. Let's talk about financial compensation, financial rewards. At the end of the day, right. that's why people work. That's right. So how do you incentivize your staff to keep working and uh -huh. to stay on for the long run. Like you said, 13 years. Number one, you need to give them a sense of ownership towards the company. But like I said, if you give them ownership and don't give them something to go with that ownership, it's very difficult. So we do have big incentive plans. In fact, some of my uh, colleagues are not very happy with me because I pay bonuses. Uh, besides bonuses, I, I have other incentive plans for my marketing team. We do a lot of remuneration schemes for our people so that they are happy. And then, you know, I also work with a lot of foreign labor. so. We sort of like go hand in hand with them, you know, they travel a lot, you know, we buy them tickets and sometimes they go back to get married and, you know, we reimburse them stuff and give them gifts and presents and it's always there. If, oh, we had a tough weekend and we just go around and say, hey, here, take something on. So the whole crew across the board, everybody gets a gift. Even like when Tipawali comes, everybody will get a gift and maybe even Christmas comes. It's, it's like that, you know, we're always constantly uh, giving these guys uh, rewards because they in turn have given us so much. What's your plans to grow the business? Grow the business? Well, you know, there's so many um, systems in place. We've got into social media. We're quite happy with that. A lot of people now come in and pass comments. And, you know, every day I look at my computer, somebody says, oh, maybe 10 people say, we love the big Raja. And I'm mm. saying, fine, you know, mm. that's great. And, you know, we've got a lot of feedback. Besides that, you know, people ask me, what's your plans? Yes, you know, we've got plans. You know, uh, we wanted to get into supermarkets to be able to place our food there. Uh, we had an airline knocking on our doors and saying, you know, can you provide us for a certain route that we want to take? And uh, we said, uh, yeah, we can, but not yet. But be honest with you, Ben, the industry is so huge. And where we are at, you know, is still very small. You know, I would say in terms of percentages, maybe we're just touching, skimming the surfaces of this whole industry. There's so much more to plow in. There's so much more staff to bring in, so much more professionals to hire so that the industry can evolve and become so much more steady. Keep on investing in the infrastructure and the industry itself will grow okay. automatically. What's the biggest mistake that you've ever made? But it was a good mistake. It taught you a lot and it made you 
a better entrepreneur? Be honest with you, Ben. You know, the business has grown at a steady pace, the way we basically wanted it to grow from right from inception, and it, it's taken its place. The things that we could we wanted to do, we couldn't do because basically financial constraints and things like that. Mistake, maybe I should have bought a property because the property prices today is just through the roof. Right. And it's crazy, you know. So trying to land a, a big property to put a catering today is not an easy task. And so that would be my, you know, maybe in hindsight as to something I should have done. Making me a better entrepreneur today with the process still continues. Well, John said it very, very well. Start with the philosophy of continuous improvement. And continuous improvement is just not implementing a model. It's about how to improve the business day by day. If you do that, then you're gonna make a lot of money. As usual, if you do wanna give us some feedback on our Astrawani Entrepreneur Facebook website right here, please do so. And give us some feedback because we'd love to hear from you. But have a great productive week. And don't forget, it's Diwali. So to all Malaysian Indians, Happy Diwali. And to all Malaysians, have a great break. Enjoy the food and we'll see you next week. Don't forget, folks, this is Entrepreneur. Okay, John, first right. question and you've got to answer it on the spot. Okay. Rapid fire, no breaks, no cuts. First question, no worries. favorite Malay cuisine and Chinese cuisine? Malay cuisine, I would love rendang top with lemang mm -hmm. and uh, Chinese cuisine, um, tim sum. Dim sum, yeah, great. good choice, yeah. Yeah. you know your food. Second question, mm -hmm. sports car or house if you had a choice? House. Why house? Uh, I don't drive that fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no trucks down the Federal Highway? No, 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 no. But I'm a safe driver. Yeah. Safe driver, what's your favorite car? Uh, well, I, I own a Mercedes and I like my Mercedes, so okay. I, I've always kept a series of Mercedes. Okay, Mercedes yeah. is a good car, a yeah. car of entrepreneurs. And an actor that would play you in a movie, if there was a movie called The Big Raja. Uh, What's the guy's name? Ku Kuding Jr. Kuding Jr. Uh, whatever is, uh, I forget his name. Uh, okay, we'll come back to that one. You can, <laughs> you know, I think I'll, we'll let our viewers okay. write in on Facebook and tell us that one. Right. And final question <laughs> before we call it a day: If you only had one ringgit and twenty cents in your wallet, right. stuck in the middle of nowhere, no handphone, credit card, ATM, no satellite signal, whatever to help you out, one ringgit and twenty cents only, what would you do with it? Buy myself a drink. What kind of drink? Uh, a packet drink. Okay. I'll okay. probably be thirsty anyway. Yeah. Without okay. everything else, yeah. So thirst, quench the thirst. Oh yeah, quench the thirst. It's very important. Keep okay. yourself hydrated, and then you can do a lot of other stuff. Is that a health tip or a business tip? <laughs> take it which way you want, Ben. Okay, I yeah. take that as both. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay.